back on the show is Derek Adkins. Got a huge fight coming up here against Alexander Hernandez at LFA 27 this Friday. Derek, what's going on? How are you? I'm doing good. Just got back from Colorado uh, yesterday morning and uh, enjoyed the UFC fights last night and enjoyed being back home with my uh, dogs and my girl. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, what would you think of the fights last night? Does that not pump you up as, as you know, heading into your fight, seeing a, a card like that? Oh, dude, that was a great card. I knew it was going to be a fun one. Um there was a lot of upsets, a lot of surprises. Um, a lot of things that I thought could happen, like Rose. I had a feeling that she could do it, but how do you bet against Joanna? So I was like, I never really said it, but I, I was like, Rose Rose looked ready this week. I, I thought she had a good chance. So those are some fun fights, though, yeah, for sure. But one thing I wanted to ask you, I saw that you were supposed to fight uh, Cody Pfister uh, last month, uh, the UFC vet. What happened with that fight? How come that didn't end up happening? Um... I'm going to try not to say anything too rude here, but I um, had a, a good local promotion here, uh, FCF Freestyle Cage Fighting. It's a great local promotion, been around for a long time, and uh, I hold the title for them, and we've been trying to, between Bellator and a couple other promotions, we've kind of been trying to make this Cody Fister fight happen ever since he's been out of UFC, and uh, for some reason... It just hasn't happened, and then FCF made it set up. I was like, great, signed my contract. We were ready to go. It was supposed to happen, I think, two weeks ago now. And I, I was game for it. I was ready. I was excited for it because I really liked that fight and everything. And uh, come to find out, I guess he never signed the contract, and he decided to that he was going to fight for his own promotion instead of FCF and everything like that. So he, he bailed on it. And uh, so a little bit of a weird, weird situation and didn't know that uh, he hadn't signed a contract. So he wasn't legally bound to fight me. So a little annoying, uh, a little disappointed that I didn't get that fight. But uh, this fight on LFA, it's, it's a good fight, real high level guy and everything. So I'm excited about it, too. Yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, Alex Hernandez, he's got the 7-1 uh, and one record. How do you feel like you match up against him in this fight? I think this is a good matchup to have a fun fight because he's an aggressive stand up guy. Uh, he likes to get the takedowns and get some ground and pound in. Um, I got good wrestling. I got. Uh, I feel like I have great takedown defense and everything if I'm on point, and uh, I feel like I'm on point now. So I uh, I feel like this would end up being a little bit of a stand-up battle, and I think, I think he has holes in his stand-up game, but he just hasn't been exposed with them too much because he's usually really good about charging in for the takedown. So I think this ends up being a, a really good fight. Two of the uh, – I feel like I'm – in that top level uh, against top guys. And then I know he's ranked, uh, I believe in your rankings at around like 13 or something. And uh, so I think it's two pretty high level 55 guys, but I think it's also set up very well for the fans. I think it's can end up being a really good, exciting fight. Cause I think it'll be a, a very active. Fight. I don't think it'll be boring at all. And you mentioned training at factory X. Who are some of your main training partners over there helping you get ready for this fight? Uh, some of my main ones, uh, um, Derek Brennan was a big one because he's, I mean, he's got I'm a really fight coming fan. up. That's right. I actually talked to Derek before his fight. Yeah, I, I just remembered that. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, he's a week at, he's a week after or my fight. He's a he's a good friend of mine. I we uh, both came in Factory X. I came in right after he kind of showed up. I'd been there a little bit and we became good friends. We're around the same weight class and everything, so we get good training up there together. He's a great guy. Got a we're both building off of our wrestling background and building to uh, getting better striking and back and forth. So. We uh we mold together well. Um, I I mean Yusuf, if uh, I, no, I'm gonna try to say his last name, but uh, one of the young guys in there, uh, he just got another win. He's like three and as a pro now. Um, he's a great coach and a friend up there. He holds pads and stuff for me. He's a little bit smaller. Uh, Marcus Edwards, all those guys. Josh Cavan, uh, I'm probably forgetting a ton of them. I got to work with uh obviously Brian Camozzi. I tra I trained with him a little bit and uh. I got to work a few rounds here or there with uh, Anthony Smith from UFC, and, uh, and uh, I got to at least roll jujitsu wise with uh, Matt Brown with UFC. He, uh, with him fighting the Southpaw Diego Sanchez, it uh, we didn't get to do much stand up together, but we got to roll roll some jujitsu together, and that was always really good feeling those guys. So. It was a good time. Very cool. That, that's interesting. So Matt, Matt will sometimes train at uh, Factory X because I know he was, I guess, what used to be Elevation Fight Team. But it seems like there's a lot of sharing going on between those gyms. Uh, it seems like it's sort of like a camaraderie, I guess. It's kind of weird in Colorado anyways. 
Yeah, that uh, that muscle farm. I don't really know all the details, so I'm don't hold me yeah, in. Yeah, no, no, of I'm course, not of course, yeah. Details, but it kind of it it kind of has dissipated. So a lot of a lot of the lower level mid tier guys have moved over to Factory X, and uh, Matt Brown's been is there pretty consistently at Factory X now. I believe Mark may be in his corner. I don't know. That's not really my place. One of the things I wanted to mention with you is I know back home you train uh, with uh, Christina Williams, and of course she was coming off that big win over Heather Hardy. You were in her corner for that fight. How cool was that? Uh, you know, for for your team just to see her get that big win on a big stage for Bellator. I mean, it was great. Uh, Christina's been uh, at the at the same gym as me since I started. Uh, I've grown into a little bit of a coach with her the MMA side and uh, work with her a lot. And it was actually crazy because. I went up to Factory X. I was there for like a week and a half. And then I actually, because I was supposed to fight Fister the day after her, I didn't think I was going to be able to go. Well, ended up that fight falling through against LFA fight. Uh, I flew out from Denver out to Connecticut to corner her. Um, whenever we took that fight, we knew we knew it was a great matchup. We knew she had the skill and the mentality to do it. So we were excited about it. And it went exactly as we planned. And it was just really, it was a fun time to be there. Uh, she get thrown into a crazy place of just everybody wanting to talk to her, the media and everything. I mean, she was so sick of pictures and everything, and we were helping her out, taking care of her. So, I mean, it was really fun being there, top-level people, being around Scott Coker. Hoist Gracie was there. I can't even remember all the names. I saw Henzo Gracie. I saw all these top guys, and uh, everybody was congratulating her. Everybody was really excited for her. So, so it was really fun being being along for her ride with that. Yeah, I really hope Bellator takes advantage of that and gives her another big fight after this and ride the momentum because I kind of feel like they, they, they kind of dropped the ball with Zach Freeman when he won his big fight over Pico. It was like months later, like he just fought, I think, like this past weekend. So they, they got to capitalize on that. I, I hope they do that with her. It would be good to see. So Yeah, I hope they get a little better about building up names because, I mean, there's some really good names that aren't known right now, and I think they need to build those up a little bit more because she can be a star for I sure. I really agree with that. Um, how's the weight cut going? Uh, you know, we're coming up here on Friday. Everything on point? Everything's good and good. Uh, I'm on the melee way with oh, nice. uh, Tyler course. Melee. I was going to say, isn't that that's like a factory X staple? You have to work with uh, with Tyler, right? So. <laughs> well, most of them work with Tyler. Yeah, I mean, he's. Uh, I was having trouble with weights before, and I was about to move up to 70, and then got hooked up with him, and it's been a cakewalk here lately. Uh, not much issue. I never stop eating. I uh, I feel great at weighing what used to. My coaches, my friends, uh, the commission even would w could be able to tell you that I was half dead at weighing. But now doing it properly, getting the him as a nutritionist, I'm uh, I'm on point. And I feel awesome at weighing. Excellent. How do you see this fight ending on Friday? I I could see it ending a few different ways. I mean, it kind of he's been off. He hasn't uh, fought in, I think, like almost two years or something like that. And uh, so with something like that, you never know. Has he been training for those two years? Is he a whole new fighter? Or is he the same one? He's took time off for personal stuff. So I don't know exactly how it's coming out. I'm ready for anything. I could see it being a crazy, exciting fight and it going to decision. But I could also see me catching him on our feet because I think he has a, plenty of holes. And then also on the ground, he's a, I think he's he opens up a chance for some submissions, which has been my kind of a little bit of what I usually get my finishes with. I think I can possibly catch him with submission. So I could, I could see this fight going a lot of different ways on how the finish happens. Um, I think it'll be a really fun fight, but I think I can finish him. Nice. I know you're not looking past him. Are you kind of looking ahead, though, at, at what's next after this as far as, uh, you know, your career and everything? Do you want to, you know, fight early uh, 2019 or 2018? Sorry, 2019 would be a year after. Don't know why I'm getting my years mixed up. But what's sort of next for you is kind of what I'm getting at here. Um, I'm, I haven't really thought that much. I've had issues before. Uh, I think it was actually about last year. This time I had a fight for Legacy before LFA happened. I had a fight for Legacy. And I kind of overlooked the guy, messed up my weight cut, overlooked the guy because I already had a contract and was set to fight three weeks later on Bellator. And I, I ended up losing because of that. So I'm, I'm really, really focused on this fight. Uh, my manager, Jim Walter, uh, when I can get him away from the UFC stuff, since he was he was out in New York last night and uh, busy doing all that stuff up there. But uh, he... I. I'll hit him up on uh, next Saturday, and we'll talk and see 
it's kind of a big thing about am I healthy because we know of a couple cards in the first or mid December, and I don't ever mind a quick turnaround if I'm healthy. So if I come out healthy, then we'll look at maybe even getting one more in before the end of the year. If not, then yeah, January, February for sure. I don't like having a whole lot of time off. I I like fighting pretty pretty regularly. It's LFA 27. It's coming up here this Friday live on Access TV. Uh, Derek, always a, a pleasure getting a chance to uh, catch up with you, man. Uh, just remind people where they can get a hold of you on social media. And uh, if you got any thank yous or shout outs, the floor is yours. For sure. Uh, uh, my uh, Facebook page, uh, Derek A Game Atkins. Uh, Twitter, Derek Atkins1. Uh, Derek MMA on Instagram. Uh, hit me up on all those. Give me shout outs. To say. Uh, tell me I'm doing a horrible job. I don't care. Whatever follows. Um, I got to thank Factory X and American Elite, both my gyms. Uh, when I'm home, I have great training partners that are dedicated to this fight game. Uh, when I go up to Factory X, I feel like I'm at home. They're all friends. They're awesome. I walk into the gym the first day. Everybody says hi. Uh, Mark Mentoy is awesome. Yusuf up there. Uh, Busy BJJ. Hey, um, I'm probably forgetting more and more. Uh, also, Landau Performance up there. Is my strength conditioning when I'm up there. Green strength is whenever I'm at home. The, both of those gyms keep me strong and feeling really good so that I've never felt out strength in a fight, which is always nice. Um, all my teammates from Edmond and in Colorado, thank you. Uh, sponsors real quick. Vintage Warrior, Telstar Technology, Quantum CBD H2O, which is awesome. Love that stuff. Uh, um I know I'm blanking out. Oh, Waymar Acquisitions is great. They help me out. Uh, my sponsors are amazing. They, they're they the ones that make it uh, able for me. This is my job, and I can go up to Colorado and everything like that. So it's amazing that I'm uh, able to do that. Um, shout out to uh, my girlfriend for putting up with all the craziness of me going away for a month and everything like that and uh, being stuck with these crazy munchkin dogs. And I probably forgot some people, but uh, – Thank you for everybody, and check my Facebook and everything for more shout-outs, the better ones.